Hey guys, it's Ben from One Cast Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Today is the second episode in, in my series of understanding sonars. Last week we talked about the basics of sonar and how they use radio waves and how they use that to create the image you see on your screen. I got my hummingbirds up here in front of me. I'm, I'm not sure if you can see it. But today we're talking about 2D sonar. You know, it, it looks old school. It's got all the colors on the screen. It's, it's not as sexy or as crisp as the down imaging or side imaging, but there's a lot of information you get from 2D sonar and a lot of scenarios, it's more precise than down imaging or side imaging, and that does with cover um, that deals with its coverage areas and its cone of coverage, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Because if you understand how that 2D sonar or my transducer behind me emits that 2D signal, and how that is displayed on the screen, you can be a lot more precise for your casting, and you can hit that structure or you hit that school of fish a lot easier when you understand where that image is at in the in, in the, uh, in, the in the water column. So. Let's stay tuned, let's get to it. Let's talk about all about 2D sonar. Hey guys, you can see I'm in the position I was last week. And I got my transducer here again. You know, last week we talked about how these radio waves come out of the transducer and this transducer is waiting for those radio waves to come back to help generate the image on the screen. Traditional sonar does that, obviously, just like all the other sonars. But traditional sonar, they emit that signal at a particular angle. And that angle depends on the frequencies. We'll talk about that in a minute. But ultimately that signal is emitted and that signal spreads out the further and further it travels to the water column. So the base of that cone is the bottom of the lake or the bottom of the river, and it's much wider across than up here at the top. This is what's called the cone of coverage. Now your cone of coverage is gonna be different depending on the frequency that you're using. So most uh, modern manufacturers have either two or three uh, frequencies you can use for traditional sonar. The first is gonna be your lower frequency. We're talking um, 77 to 80 kilohertz. Now the lower frequencies are great for penetrating uh, further in the water column. In fact, if you go offshore and you do some offshore fishing, you're fishing several hundred feet, they almost ex exclusively rely on traditional sonar and even frequencies lower than bass fishing when we're talking about 50 kilohertz because it can penetrate real deep and it can penetrate that salt water better. But for freshwater fishing, the lowest frequency it's usually gonna come out of this transducer is uh, 70 to 80 kilohertz. Um, now each manufacturer um, emits this signal at a different angle out of here. Uh, but typically your lower frequencies, your 77 to 80 kilohertz, is gonna come out at 60 degrees. So you have a 60 degree cone coming out of your transducer. That impacts what you see or how much coverage area you're talking. There's a formula, I'll put the formula up here on the screen. But a rule of thumb is for every depth of water that you're fishing, if you have a 60 degree beam angle, that means your diameter of that circle across equals your depth. So if you're in 30 feet of water, this, the bottom of the circle on this cone is 30 feet across. What that means, if you see an object in the water, or on the, sorry, if you see a, an object on the bottom, that means it could be 15 feet to the front, to the side, behind at an angle of the transducer. And when you do a math on that, when you're in 30 feet of water and you're using a 77 to 80 kilohertz traditional uh, transducer, um, then you're talking that the square footage area of, of, of that circle is almost 900 square feet. That means if you see an object, a, a lay down or school of fish or, or a rock and you mark that waypoint, again, that transducer is not telling you exactly where it's at. It's, it's just somewhere within that cone of coverage. So when you start fan casting, you're covering 900 square feet or you have to cover 900 square feet to be able to exact find that point you're trying to, trying to hit with your lure. Take an average size two-story house, 1,800 square feet. You're talking the base of this cone is the same as the first floor there. So it's, it's pretty significant area. Now let's talk about your higher frequencies. So again, most of your hummingbirds, your garments, your Lorances, Ray Marines, they'll typically higher, have a higher setting or higher frequency in tradition sonar. They usually go up to 200 kilohertz. So 200 kilohertz, most manufacturers emit those at a 20 degree angle. So that cone, as you can see, is much more narrow, or narrow, it's a lot smaller, and the, and the base of that is a lot smaller. Again, there's a formula for it, 
But the rule of thumb is, if we're using 200 kilohertz in that beam angle, or the angle it comes out of the transducer is 20 degrees, it's one third of your depth. So if you're in 30 feet of water, the base of that circle on the bottom is gonna be 10 feet across. So again, if you see an object or a school of fish on the bottom there, that means that object is within five feet or the other side of that transducer in front, behind, or at an angle. And when you do a math for that, the coverage area for that is about 78 square feet, size of a master bathroom. So when you use that higher frequency, it's a lot smaller coverage area, and if you see an object on it, you mark your waypoint, you can hit it a lot faster. You can be more precise on it. The other benefit of a higher frequency a traditional sonar is because that wavelength is shorter, and there's a frequency, there's more waves per period, and we're not trying to geek out too much, but more information can get back and forth. That is why you see more target separation. You can see the difference between a fish on top of a tree down there is because that signal is much more precise, is, is, is one way to put it. So you get more detail at the higher frequency and you get less coverage to be, be more precise. Now again, the drawback to that is, if you're only running 2D sonar, or only run 2D and downscan, and again, downscan's a topic for uh, a future video, the next video, you're gonna miss a lot of information with that narrow 200 frequency cone. So um, those are two aspects to understanding the coverage area, which is extremely important when you go out fishing. Because if you know the frequency you're using and you know how much coverage area you have and roughly how much depth, that helps you mark your waypoint and know exactly where you need to cast or how much you need to cast before you need to move on to your next, uh, next waypoint. I'll be remiss if I didn't mention how you can hack this information to be more efficient on the water. And what I mean by that, most manufacturers, you can display both your higher and lower frequency traditional sonar at the same time. So what that means is because there are different frequencies and they won't interfere, you get both cones of coverage. Now that's great because if you see an object on the, the, the lower frequency or the larger cone, but you don't see it on the higher frequency or smaller cone, you know that object is within one cone of coverage, but it's not within the small one, so it's either far to the left, to the right, in front, or behind you. Um, say you're in 30 feet of water, so we know that larger cone's 30 feet, uh, across, we know that a smaller cone is 10 feet across. That means somewhere, that object is somewhere between 20 and 30 feet, or, or sorry, 10 and 30 feet on the other side of the transducer. Um, so a couple ways you can do that. I mean, you can mark your waypoint and you can know you need to cast off to the left and right of that, or you can spin your boat around and try to pick up both on the same image. It's because if you have uh, that rock, that fish, that, that, that lay down, and you have it on both, both of your uh, images there, on both your higher and lower frequency, then you know it's pretty doggone close to and you can mark your waypoint and start fishing it. So that's a way you can hack it to be a little more efficient out there on the water. You know, last week, and if you haven't watched that video, I, I recommend you checking out. Last week we talked about how your sonars work best when you move uh, between three to four or even five miles per hour. And, th and that's especially true of traditional sonar because if you've ever stopped stationary and you see fish or structure below the boat, you see that straight line. Now, the reason for this is, and we'll keep this stationary here for a second. We're stationary, we have your cone of coverage, a fish comes in the cone, swims through the cone, and back out again. This is ultimately how the fish arch is created, because when that fish first enters that cone of coverage, it is the furthest away from the transducer. So it's a little deeper. And as it gets closer, right, that, that signal has less to travel, that's why that arch comes up, and then as it leaves the cone, it goes back out. That's ultimately how fish archers are. Obviously, the larger the fish is, the larger that arch is gonna be because there's more signal reflecting back. Um, same thing when you're, when you're moving, when this transducer is moving, right, and that fish is stationary, or that object's stationary, that's how you get those arches on the screen. So that's ultimately how traditional sonar creates those arches. And again, we're looking for those large arches um, especially when we're looking to identify fish on there. Uh, bait fish are not, you're gonna be extremely small archers or they're just gonna be grouped up together in like a big bait ball. Um, so I think that's important to understand too that that's ultimately how those images are created. All right guys, so I think that kind of wraps up what I wanna talk about with traditional sonar. I, I, again, I think the big takeaway is understanding the coverage area and how much area you're actually seeing with your transducer. Um, I should make one more point about that as I forgot to mention earlier. 
So you have your transducer here. It's sending that signal out and you have that cone of coverage. You see a tree that comes from 30 feet to 15 feet. We'll use the 30 feet example again. And let's just use the lower, the lower frequency, uh, the 60 kilohertz. Or well, if we know that treetop is shown on our screen at 15 feet, we can cut that circle off at 15 feet. That means that treetop is within seven and a half feet on either side of the transducer or in front and behind. Because remember, at 15 feet, at, 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 at 70 to 80 kilohertz, at 60 degree beam angle, then you know that that circle is 15 feet across. If the transducer is in the middle of that circle, that means seven and a half feet of either side. Same thing if you're using the 200 kilohertz and you, you see that object come up to 15 feet, well then you know it's a third. Then you know that circle at 15 feet is five feet for the 200 kilohertz, that, that one third rule. That means that that object that you're seeing on the screen is within two and a half feet of the other side of your transducer. That is pretty much right below the boat. So that's how you can use that information too when you see objects either uh, coming up off the bottom or you see fish suspended. You know, you can cut that cone off and do, do the quick math in your head, and then you know exactly where you need to cast to. So that's another, another way you can hack this, hack this technology. So again, that's what I wanted to cover today in Tradition of Sonar, is talk about coverage areas and, and kind of the ways the fish archers are, are, are created. You know, there's a lot of videos out there, maybe we'll do some future videos about your settings and ping speed um, and the different color palettes, but uh, I think if you understand the technology and what that transducer is seeing and how that's displayed on your screen, then you can go out and be a better fisherman. At least be more uh, efficient with your cast and you, can, you know where to graph errors more. So with that said, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll see you guys out there next time. Alonkers one cast away.